Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is Pier Andrea Pirani. Um, like I said, I'm connecting from Kota Kinabalu uh, in Malaysia. And I collaborate with the Digros Foundation, which is one of the uh, organizations bringing uh, this event online today. Um, we'll be talking, and the event is organized with um, KM for the Knowledge Management for Development Partnership. Um, we'll talk about uh, Kim for that in a second, but uh, uh, we all know how to behave online, so I'm going to skip this quickly. Um, just let me tell you that we really hope that even if we have a small group today, you'll all be uh, engaged in the process uh, and you'll all contribute to, um, to the meeting. We put together what I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, set of speakers, um, and I hope that the audience will be not just an audience, but they will. As an audience, you will also engage and turn into a participant and speaker yourselves. Um, in case you wonder if you don't know about the <clears throat> Digroups Foundation, um, Digroups, uh, the Digroups journey started about 20 years ago um, in 2002, where a group of organizations set up Digroups as a project to um, create uh, workspaces and email-based groups to collaborate, uh, um, have online dialogue and conversation. Um, over the years, the found the groups has evolved. Uh, um, it was set up a foundation. The Groups Foundation was set up in 2009. And uh, uh, maybe some of you know Digros by the digros.org platform that the foundation um, uh, used to, um, uh, was associated with and was run by a service provider um, until 20, 2018. In 2019, the foundation has uh, uh, reimagined itself and has evolved uh, in a way going back to, to the origin. So while we uh, still support uh, uh, and host and incubate online groups and communities on a, a platform. Um, what we do more is collaborate with our partners uh, into learning from each other and, and identifying ways for uh, more effective collaboration, communication, learning, and indeed dialogue. So this, uh, 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 this event is part of uh, uh, the activities, this type of activities that we do. Um, I'll tell uh, more about why we're doing this today here uh, in just a few moments, but I would like to invite uh, Gladys, uh, Gladys Kenboy from the Camp for Dev community uh, to just briefly tell us uh, um, about Camp for Dev and uh, specifically what Camp for Dev does uh, in terms of youth engagement. Like I said, Camp for Dev is a global community of practice of about more than 5,000 uh, professionals working in uh, development cooperation and that are passionate um, and knowledgeable indeed about uh, knowledge management uh, and knowledge sharing, facilitation and learning. Uh, Gladys is part of the core group uh, and she's also very much involved into uh, some of the youth activities that the community does. Gladys, would you like to come in briefly, please? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pierre. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, my name is Gladys, joining from Kenya. I'm a member of the Camp for Dev and currently serving um, as one of the co leader uh, of the Camp for Dev Knowledge Cafes and also serving in the core group team. So, Camp for Dev it is a global network community of international practitioners who are interested in knowledge management and also knowledge sharing issues, approaches, who seek to share their ideas um, and experiences in the domain. Uh, it's an open forum for everyone. Membership is free. It was founded in 2000. Right now we have 22 years. Soon we'll be having a celebration. Last year, um, we launched the Camp for Dev Youth Leadership Forum. They've been engaging with young people across the globe through various activities such as the Camp for Dev uh, Monthly Knowledge Cafes. And you've been seeing in the faces how young people have been leading various uh, sessions. In addition to that, also we have the Camp for Dev Journal. Um, you can join and also be part of the supporting team. You can be mentored in that area on how you can be editor and also write articles in um, 
peer reviewed journals. In addition to that, also there's a research community where they support young people and also whole uh, professionals would like to join um, and contribute in the research field. In addition to that, we also have other activities like book reviews, and we involve young people to participate and join and to learn new skills. Uh, yeah, there are other several activities uh, and other programs which also we collaborate with like-minded organizations, and we have had members of the camp, but we have senior members uh, and also members who supports young people uh, in their professionals. And I'm one of them, I'm privileged to member to be part of the Camp for Deaf team. This is a community and it's a home to me, which I've really grown in terms of my career growth, uh, contributing uh, at local, regional level and also um, at a global level. So feel free to join us at Camp for Deaf. We welcome you. Uh, we have so many other programs that we can engage you in case you want to grow and support various sustainable development goals. So thank you, Pierre, over to you. Thank you very much, Gladys. Thanks a lot for, for joining us and for uh, uh, giving us this brief uh, uh, overview of what Camp for Dev is and does. Um, I hope you, I know you have to leave at a certain point, but please stay on as long as you can uh, with us. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, Jessica, I'm going to share my screen sure. and would you lead us in the next beat? Yeah, so before we have, we hear from our very inspiring and interesting speakers today. We thought we'd do a little bit of getting to know each other. So we're going to put you in some small breakout groups in a moment for 10 minutes. And what we would like you to discuss after you have introduced yourself to each other is we want you to think about one, I mean, and you may not have one of each, so it's not compulsory to have both, but think about maybe one positive experience of when you've either contributed or participated to a youth dialogue or forum, and then maybe one not so positive experience. Um, so we really want to learn from these experiences and, and how we can re then provide recommendations to other organizations when they're engaging in, and working with youth in dialogue. So just make sure obviously that everyone has a chance to speak and share um, and then we'll just bring you back for a little quick group reflection on what you've heard so unless anyone has any questions i think we can open breakout rooms let's go for it great all right enjoy everyone i hope you have great conversations and you meet lots of interesting people Welcome back, Nasheen. Did you have a energizing conversation? Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Good, good. Welcome back, Jessica. Everyone is coming back now. Yeah, it's nice to see the screen populating yeah. with all little videos or pictures. Hope you got a chance to get to know each other and find out a little bit more about your experiences. Just wait for the stragglers who don't want to end their conversations. <laughs> uh, about 10 seconds, they will all be back. Yes, seems room three is still carrying on. <laughs> uh, well, with Gladys and Elvis, uh, yeah. yeah. I think we're getting everybody back in now. And some more people joining. I think we got everybody back. Huh? And it was room three. We were really, you, you, you kept chatting, eh? Gladys and Cole, till the very last minute or last second. <laughs> Great. Welcome back, everybody. So we hope you had uh, uh, you met new friends or some old some people that you met before. I saw that there was a room specifically that. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe there were not, many, not very many connect, new connections there, uh, but um, I hope it was an opportunity to reconnect uh, with people you already knew. Um, so what are we doing next, uh, Jessica? We want to do a bit of uh, uh, crowdsourcing, right? Yes. So I'm going to share my screen. And like I said, we, we really want to have to turn audience into active participants. So we have a quick mentee. Uh, Jessica is popping the link in the chat, uh, or if you have the phone in your hand, uh, uh, you can just uh, mm, scan the QR code. Uh, 
uh, will uh, will see it uh, will will show it again. But in the menti, you'll find two questions or two uh, well, not two questions, but two screens, one after the other. And we would like you to uh, uh, describe in in one to three words. Uh, uh, an experience that was not so positive about contributing or engaging into youth dialogue and words that you associate with a positive experience of contributing and engaging into, into a youth dialogue. So it's one, two, three words, uh, um, something you know, feel about feelings, qualities, values that you associate with an experience not so positive and the same but associated with a positive experience. So how would you, how do you describe them from your own, um, from your own experience? And let me show again uh, the QR code um, in case, uh, in case uh, you haven't had time, a chance to scan it. And like I said, I think there is a direct link in the chat, uh, which you can just click on and it will open um, the menti. So let me move to the results page and see what we see. Not followed up. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Homogenizing youth. OK, that's very interesting. And you see we're keeping getting uh, um, input. So it's uh, uh, changing. Uh, not post dialogue action, which uh, I think is closely related to not follow up. Used for PR, uh, I think that's also maybe associated with can be associated with tokenism, I guess, uh, or that's how I would read it, read it. And tokenized uh, comes again. Uh, Jessica, what else do you see? Anything that is coming, popping out for you? I mean, I think they're all really important impactful words when and and things that I will have witnessed as well myself so I'm really pleased that we have this space to share them I think yeah this kind of uh, there's a difference for me between being listened to and being heard and that's actually quite easy to create these spaces where we think we're being listened to but with no action afterwards we know we haven't really been heard and acknowledged so I think like yeah this real uh commitment to including and listening and acting on what youth um, are contributing is really important. So yeah, thank you everyone for sharing these and keep sharing. Um, very important. Yeah, we're still getting some, but don't worry, we'll keep, you can keep contributing and we'll go back to this uh, later on uh, in our program. Uh, but let's turn on the more positive side. Shall yeah, we, like Jessica? how you started with the get. not so positive, Pierre, and now we're going to have the positive. That was a good choice to go that way around. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have any yet. I don't see any positive no, yet you have coming to, in. It's because you're hiding them. Oh, sorry. Yes, thanks. Uh -huh. There you go. Listening. The Mandarin. And uh, yeah. Easy to deal with, common ground. Mm. Funding would be interesting to know what that means, uh, I guess, or I would probably it's funding for, I mean, having enough resources to, I think that can be read in different different ways, enough resources to run the, the, the dialogue or maybe enough resources to follow up on uh, uh, the outcome. I guess that can be different ways to, uh, to read it. bonding mm, that's quite nice clear outcomes as well and think what from your side jessica what are you picking what up really from this is jumping out to me is creativity and i think that's um something i'd love to hear more about in our um chat show is kind of these creative approaches and what what that means and what kind of different quality of outcomes we can get when we use creativity to engage and communicate. Um, so yeah, it'd be really great to hear a bit more about that from people's experience. But again, yeah. really good selection of powerful words. And yes, listening quite uh, uh, um, coming out very strong, right? Yeah. Um, I think also passion. Right, it's it's really important to uh, to have a meaningful um, process and meaningful results. I guess this is great. 
thanks very much, folks. And I see that some of you are still contributing. Please keep doing that. And if you have just joined, uh, a couple of you have joined, you can go to menti.com and use the code that you see on the top of the screen uh, or the link uh, uh, that uh, uh, Jessica hopefully you can put again in the chat. Um, so if you just have joined, you're still, you can still contribute to your um, contribute words that you associate with positive and less so lots of positive experiences in contributing and participating in a youth dialogue. Um, but uh, we need to move on. We'll come back to this later on. Um, but at the, for the moment, let us move on uh, uh, with the program. And let me give you just very briefly why we're here today. Uh, it's not just that we've decided, let's do this because tomorrow is International Youth Day and we have to do something. This is part of a process that actually started um, at least uh, um, more than one year ago, uh, where as uh, the Gross Foundation, we um, facilitated and ran an online consultation or dialogue for that matter, um, on looking, looking at more effective ways for online collaboration, dialogue, and interaction. Uh, really looking at what works uh, in international development. Uh, we had over 100 participants in a series of uh, email-based discussion and uh, um, Zoom um, workshops. And there are, this is just a screenshot of a brief uh, that came out uh, from that process, uh, which we'll share uh, in the chat. Uh, just some of the recommendation or the key messages that came out uh, have to do with the, uh, the need to mix uh, different formats and channels to have, effect, to have effective online collaboration and dialogues too. Uh, learn and experiment together with the participants, but also to have a uh, uh, very clear agenda, process, and objectives that are uh, um, understand by everyone. Um, there was uh, one of the keywords that you shared was common ground. I think that relates to, to this. Uh, but also what uh, something that I mentioned also before to put in place processes to turn audiences into active and engaged participant. Um, other recommendations to do with inclusion and representations, and it's it's quite a rich brief, uh, so uh, we, we'll, we will share and hopefully you'll find it interesting. So that was January 2021 when we produced the brief. Uh, and then later on uh, in the same year, in October last year, um, we hold a meeting, a workshop, uh, um, also to celebrate the 20 years of D groups. And we really looked at uh, uh, um, future online future for online collaboration uh, for more effective international development. So we brought in different people that uh, have been engaged in um, online collaboration for quite some time, but also some uh, uh, new, let's say, younger professionals. And together we look at how the landscape of online collaboration has been changing and what are the actions um, that we should take as individuals and as organization going forward, what we should consider. Um, it was a very rich, very rich uh, discussion and events, a lot of learning points. And again, we uh, were happy to share them. These are just some sketch notes from one of our uh, keynote speaker, Nancy White. If you don't know her, I recommend you follow her for anything to do uh, about online collaboration, communities of practice, and much more. Um, uh, so the event was very successful, but, uh, uh, well, not bad, and uh, we learned from it a lot. One of our speakers in the closing panel was Anna Kebelka, who could not be, she was invited to be with us today, but uh, uh, she couldn't join. Uh, but she shared a very, very interesting reflection at the end, uh, uh, which uh, I'm not going to paraphrase, uh, I'll let you hear in her own voice. Hopefully you can hear it okay really like to stress um, something that has been missing for me today, which is the power of young people. Um, and I would, like, uh, I would like to invite you uh, in your work to make space for the creative and innovative ideas of the younger generations. Uh, from, my, from what I could tell, and I'm judging you here by the people that had their cameras on, but in this room, we, me with my 29 years, I might have been the youngest person invited today. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think a session talking about the future, our future, I consider that really crucial. 
to also dialogue with younger generations, actually much younger than me, <laughs> who have so much knowledge uh, on this matter. So that was, yeah, just really something I wanted to, to stress here. And thanks for hearing me out. So we listened to, um, to, uh, to Hannah. Uh, and uh, uh, we reflected uh, on on what you said, and uh, we brought really like this together this event today to really try and look how the development organization uh, can best include young voices in dialogues, and uh, uh, what we can learn also from the ways that youth engage online, which uh, might be very different. Uh, uh, we are not we we don't like both Jessica and I uh, don't really like to talk about innovation, right? Uh, because that's an, probably abused as a war, but just like I mentioned before, what are the new and creative ways uh, that youth do engage online? Um, and what can we learn? What do we need to, 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 to know and to incorporate in our practice as individual and individuals and as organizations? So, uh, we're gonna do this today through a chat show, uh, which uh, is gonna come up, coming up right next after this slide. Um, Let's see how it goes, but we had uh, um, thought about a small exercise in breakout groups, and then we'll do some reflections uh, together before we wrap up and close the event. So uh, this is really the main part uh, uh, of, the, of this event today. Uh, we have three, um, three speakers uh, that will be sharing their experience in organizing, participating, engaging in youth. Um, uh, dialogues, uh, different forms, different uh, uh, shapes, different types, different sectors, but hopefully they all have, uh, uh, well, not hopefully, I know that they all have uh, interesting um, uh, cases and, and experiences to share and to discuss with us. So uh, we have, uh, um, you can see them on screen, you saw them, you met them in your breakout probably. So we have Erika Di Girolami from Italy. Erika has uh, two master's degrees, uh, in one in environmental policy and economics at the University of Turin in Italy, and one in forest and natural conservation at Wageningen University in the Netherlands. Um, Erika is, is a researcher. She has co-authored a book. She has been doing systematic literature reviews, and uh, she has been con she has been contributing to different uh, uh, scientific research products um, uh, related to mostly. And I'm paraphrasing Erika here. Please feel free to correct me later or to add uh, in the forestry sector um, around the financial mechanism at the landscape scale, community-based organization, forest farm producer organization small order forestry, and more. Uh, but most important, and uh, especially relevant for this uh, event today, um, <clears throat> since 2020, Erika is the co-focal point of the UN Forest Forum uh, Major Group for Children and Youth. And uh, she has been working with FAO in the lead up to the World Forestry Congress, which was held earlier this year in, in Seoul, um, uh, working on a region on the process uh, for a regional consultation process that then led to uh, the, the development of a, a youth call to action. So we're very happy to have Erika here with us uh, today, and we look forward to hear from her. Uh, we also then, we have Noshin. Uh, Noshin is, uh, um, uh, is a, she has a background in agriculture, and she has a passion for ICT and communication, which she developed through blogging and work experience. Uh, she's from Mauritius, but she's based in uh, uh, Burkina Faso, and she co-manages a communication for development agency, called MediaProd, and MediaProd is the uh, production house behind Agribusiness TV. Some of you might know or might follow Agribusiness TV. Uh, it's a web TV that is showing, showcasing success stories of youth and agriculture entrepreneurship in Africa. And Machine is also a board member in the DGROPS Foundation. And last but not least, uh, we have Vurud al Tusha. hopefully I'm pronouncing it quite all right, uh, from Jordan. Uh, Vrud is a researcher uh, at the Higher Population Council and, and gender coordinator at the ShareNet Jordan Hub. She's doing a PhD in philosophy and she has a master's degree in gender and women studies at the University of Jordan. Uh, so very different background, very different experiences, uh, but yeah, we're really happy to 
have you all here with us today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can, uh, I can all see you all and our participants. And uh, uh, we have a few questions for, uh, for our panel or for our guests. Uh, uh, but please, I really encourage everybody in the room here to, uh, to become a host uh, himself or herself and to drop in question in the chat. We'll have some moments for Q&A or we'll bring you in uh, at some point during, during this chat show. So we expect some questions from the audience as well. And Erika, uh, maybe we can start with you. Um, if you can um, get us off and tell us about uh, um, a, 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 a specific process or an example, uh, a, a case of um, a youth dialogue process or forum that you have been involved, uh, um, something around the people, the process of engagement. And, you know, can you give us your, can you share with us your case in uh, a couple of minutes? So um, we'll talk more about that, but can you just get, get us off? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very, very happy to be part of this dialogue today. And well, um, I'm, I'm going to skip my own introduction because Pirandra, you have been amazing in giving a comprehensive overview of my background. Um, I today... was reading, but thanks for the votes of confidence. <laughs> um, so today I would like to um, discuss the overall journey that led uh, my team and I to the development of the Youth Call for Action, which, as you said, uh, which just mentioned, has been presented at the World Forestry Congress, which took place from the 2nd to the 6th of May of this year in Seoul. Um, as as a focal point to the UNFS and GCY, but also at the time as a forest policy consultant at FAO, I had to lead the development of these calls for action, which is basically a youth declaration. The, just a few words on what is this youth declaration, what it's about. Um, the aim of the youth call for action is to increase awareness of all the stakeholders that attended the World Forestry Congress and beyond of the necessary enabling conditions for youth and young professionals to work in the forest sector and contribute expertise to the forest sector. Specifically, we wanted to investigate the challenges and the solutions to meaningful inclusion, participation, and recognition of youth and young professionals in the forest sector. Uh, for the sake of clarity, we identified as youth and young professional, everyone between the age of 18 to uh, 35. Now, this process was a long journey. It started in 2020, and my team and I, we weren't alone. First of all, we had a great substantial support from FAO and the World Forestry Congress uh, Secretariat, but we also worked closely in collaboration with other youth expert groups uh, that form part of the World Forestry Congress Youth Coalition. Some of them are here, and uh, they have been amazing and key for the success of uh, the World Forestry Congress Youth Consultation and the Youth Call uh, for Action. Some of these groups, just for the sake of acknowledgement and recognition, I would like to say, were YPARD, obviously IFSA, Youth for Nature, Yango, Global Youth Biodiversity Network, and Global Indigenous Youth Caucasus, among others. Um, now, Overall, we managed to engage over 600 youth organizations and youth experts from all over the world that uh, contributed to the um, six priorities of the World Forestry Congress. How did we get to that? Um, as I said, in 2020, my team and I, we worked in close collaboration with the WFC Youth Coalition. Together, we identify, we map, we uh, reach out to and follow up with, youth organizations and youth representatives that work in remote areas globally that generally are not represented in international forums and international conferences, uh, that they are really you know, investing their own resources to contribute to the forest sector. Um, we send them a Google survey, uh, and that was key to identify the preliminary challenges that they were facing the barriers to contribute to the forest sector and specifically to the thematic priorities of the World Forestry Congress, and what were the solutions and the recommendations that they wanted to give to key stakeholders in the forest sector coming from the private sector, public sector, NGOs, scientific institutions, and so on. Uh, overall, we reached out to 200 youth organizations, and 80% of them, they replied to us. So that was the very first 
pool of youth experts and youth organizations that were on board with us. Later on, uh, six months forward, we started to collaborate also with FAO and the World Forestry Congress. And together, we designed the regional consultations, uh, which were implemented at the beginning of February. So let's say two months and a half before the actual World Forestry Congress. Um, the regional consultations were of three hours and a half long. We had one for Europe and North America, one for Latin America and the Caribbean, one specific for Asia Pacific, and the other one for Africa. Now, as I said, we already had our pool of youth organizations that we already engaged all by ourselves, like youth for the youth. Um, but the support and the social media promotion via FAO, the World Forestry Congress, and obviously UNFFMCY, uh, IPSA, and other youth expert, expert groups, social media channels has been key to reach out to even more youth organizations and youth experts and individuals that could have been uh, on board with us in the regional consultation. Uh, we envision, together with people from FAO, among which I have to give credit to you, Andrea. you have been here together with our colleagues from FAO in helping us. Um, we designed the regional consultations as an open access process, open, sorry, open process that allowed for in-depth discussion on, again, challenges, solutions, and recommendations of young people between the age of 18 to, uh, um, to 35. Uh, we have been very lucky because Without the support of FAO and the World Forest Congress, we wouldn't have had access to interpretation, French, Spanish, English. And that really helped us in having a meaningful debate because you have to consider that not everyone is an extroverted. A lot of people might be shy and, you know, English might be a barrier. People that do not speak really well English might be, you know, shy and just engaging in the discussion. So having an interpretation made everyone comfortable in speaking their own mind and being transparent in the discussion. Uh, the regional consultations took place in Zoom and we had four different settings of um, segments, I would say of 45 minutes each. And we, in, in these four segments, we discussed, uh, first of all, what the participants would think of meaningful inclusion, recognition and participation of young people how that should look like in the forest sector. And then the second segment would uh, explore the challenges, the third segment, the best practices and the solutions, and the fourth, so the third segment and the fourth segment, the recommendations. Ideally, we would be divided into breakout rooms and we would work with Myro boards because we wanted to have, you know, to have some substantial data to later form the youth call for action. But we was also wanted to have fun. I mean, who wants to engage three hours and a half in boring discussions? Like, we are young, so we also want to have some shared of, you know, let's say fun. And so we designed these micro boards where uh, participants could answer with sticky boards. And we also had little trees that young people could use to vote the most uh, interesting and most relevant answer or whether it could be a challenge or a solution or a recommendation. I have to say that maybe Veranda, you would remember that didn't work always because not everyone had access to, uh, you know, to a computer, to the Miro board. Not everyone was experienced with the Miro board in the first place. Not everyone was joining us. Uh, some people were joining us with the, the, the phone and not everyone has access to stable internet connection. Um, so we have to be flexible. One recommendation would be just be flexible. So uh, even if we don't have... give out do, don't give out too many recommendations right now, right, right. away. Yeah, we, okay, we'll go so... back to we'll go back to recommendations. Okay, uh, so but... I will skip this part. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. I will skip this part and save it for later. I'm not going to spoiler anything. Don't spoil. Don't spoil it. Uh, but this is great, uh, Enrique. So I'm, I'm I'm taking some notes. I'm hearing. Uh, the importance of partnership, uh, the importance of process, uh, the importance of uh, um, from your from your case, mm -hmm. uh, uh, funding and support, uh, um, languages. I mean inclusion, of course, uh, and and really uh, uh, a, con a conscious effort to 
include uh, in this dialogue people that would not have been participating in it. So uh, this is this is great. I'm going to pause you there, Eric, for a second. Well, for more than a second, uh, and uh, uh, maybe we can turn to Varud. Uh, um, and Varud, I mean, you're coming from a very different sector, which is uh, 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 sexual health and reproductive rights. Um, so, uh, can you can you br briefly give us uh, uh, the, your your experience? Uh, can, can you just can you sum up in a few? Well, I I'm not saying two minutes because that's what I said to Erica, and she took five. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I know that. Yeah, but can you can you can you briefly tell us uh, your story? Let's put it this way, and what yes. you're going to share with us today. Thank you, Pierre, and thank you, Erica. Um, so uh, to start, uh, I work at the Heart Population Council, and the Heart Population Council in Jordan hosts a, a, a knowledge platform for sexual reproductive health, which is the Sharenet. So Sharenet is a, a, an international platform, and uh, there is a hub for uh, Jordan. And within the uh, work of uh, both HPC, like which is the Higher Population Council and the uh, Sharnet, participatory work and collaborative work is a must and is a mission. So one of our uh, main activities and uh, the collaborative approach is something called the SHIRIM, which is the Sharnet International uh, Improvement, uh, Rapid Improvement uh, improvement Model, sorry. So uh, each uh, of the hubs uh, in the uh, Sharnet International um, uh, hubs uh, uh, decide to work on a specific topic. And for this uh, year, our topic in Sharnet Jordan was the um, parent, adolescent, sexual, reproductive health education and uh, information. So, uh, Talking about the SHIRAM and as a 18-month participatory approach model, uh, we should finalize it in a knowledge uh, product. So um, we thought of, uh, to, in order for us to create this knowledge product, we need to uh, include uh, people in this collaborative approach. And uh, usually as a, a, the High Population Council, we work on an um, institution uh, level with policymakers and some super formal um, a, a, a settings. Uh, and so our partners mostly are from the uh, same uh, decision maker levels. So, uh, but we decided we're not doing that in the Shirem. So uh, talking about it, we thought that we need to include a specific category here, which is the adolescent, which is the uh, uh, target group in our uh, topic. So how can we not engage them when we talk about them, right? So uh, our stakeholders in this uh, journey were, uh, were the um, stakeholders, the decision makers on the institutional level. And at the same time, we gave the same uh, balance for the um, uh, parents and a uh, female and male uh, adolescent uh, participants. Okay, so uh, the thing about SHIRAM is that uh, uh, SHIRAM International on the international level conducts a four learning sessions for the uh, hubs uh, teams or what's called the core teams. And as a core team here in, this, in the Secretary of SHIRAM Jordan, we should uh, 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 reflect uh, this uh, knowledge and this learning session on uh, the local uh, uh, level. And here we, where we uh, concluded the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the adolescent and our uh, target group. I will uh, leave the, uh, the, um, the space uh, for our next speaker and then I will tell uh, more details about the engagement of those students. Thanks, Varud. Thanks very much. Uh, this is great. So what I'm picking up here, it's really uh, this element of intergenerational dialogue uh, and again, the effort to include a very specific population as part, the, the conscious effort to include a very specific segment of, uh, uh, of a very specific stakeholder group in this in this process. Uh, and yeah, the, the process that spans over a uh, uh, um, an 18 months period, but then there's something coming after it, which is a knowledge project. We'll go back to all of this later, but let's move on to Noshin. Um, again, uh, very different case, different sector, uh, but that's what we like uh, uh, to see what we can learn from mm -hmm. experiences that might be 
very different. Noshin, over to you. Okay, thank you, Pierre. Hi, everybody. Uh, my my contribution would be more to share my experience as a young person, <clears throat> a young person, a youth who participated in <clears throat> sorry in various forums and dialogues on youth in agriculture. The example that I would like to highlight on is a project called ODIS, which stands for Agriculture, Rural Development, and Youth in the Information Society, which was a, was a project uh, of CTA, an organization for CTA was based in Netherlands. And I got involved in that in 2010, uh, which makes it 12 years ago, as part of an essay competition. So what they did as a process is everyone who took part in that competition, they brought all of these young people together in a mailing list online. And we were from African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries. So very diverse uh, reality uh, that we were living were very different, but they wanted to bring us to the, together so that we share as a young person, how do we see agriculture? What are the challenges and how do we see, you know, what, what do we see ahead? What do we need? So this, this it started quite just as a reflection. I would say on their side also, there was not a clear project set up already. They wanted to get input from youth and this is how it all started. So uh, it started with thematic discussions to just share our, our, our views, our experience in agriculture in our country. And immediately we saw that being in, from different parts of the world, we are not living the same thing. And in terms, if we talk about innovation, ICT in agriculture, it was not at the same level. Some countries were more advanced while others were still you know, developing new technologies. So, so these conversations we, we had, I, I won't say it was forum, it was more thematic discussions, which was brought into physical meetings like workshops where we would discuss more and elaborate and the first meeting we had a physical meeting we translated these discussions into a communique that was shared with different stakeholders including policymakers. and at the same point i think the good thing was it was like uh, it, it was of course to raise awareness but the organizations used these recommendations to to prepare to their program and projects that were coming on. So in terms of, um, I would say the how it evolved, I would say 2010 to 2020, this network kept on growing. Like each time they do a new activity with a new group of youth, or if there is another event, it was even open. Anyone interested or involved in agriculture could join. Over the over the years, we got over thousands of people who joined, youth from different countries. And every day it was, you know, it was active. There was a facilitator dedicated to, you know, all these years. On, for example, today I'm sharing an opportunity about an event or there is some advocacy from this region I want to share with the others. So it was kind of, it went on and on for, for, for more than 10 years. So this is a bit, I think I have covered a bit the first question. I will maybe leave the rest for, for the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Thanks so much, Noshin. Um, Pierre, are you still with us or are you having internet trouble? <laughs> I was having internet trouble, but I think I'm back now. Great. Okay, so yeah, really good to hear those overviews of your experiences, the areas you work in, the case studies. Um, and we heard some aspects of the different formats, but maybe just quickly, particularly to Warud and Noshin, um, in your experience, and we saw this obviously in the word cloud, this word meaningful. So what are the most successful, appropriate formats that you have found to really create this meaningful and generative dialogue with young people. And I think we've also had some really interesting comments in the chat. One of those was just acknowledging the time that these processes take and actually that we've seen that there's been a real commitment to that time with the people that you've worked with. Um, so maybe just also a little bit about how you manage the different formats over a, a process of time. So Warud, would you like to start us off with that? Thank you. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Jessica. Um, so uh, thinking of the process of the uh, SHIRM itself, we look at it as a, a international intergenerational uh, dialogue that makes a, a, the two uh, generations uh, together for the same uh, goal and for the same um, aim. And thinking of the process of uh, engaging uh, youth um, as sexual reproductive health is a super sensitive uh, topic uh, and the context of uh, Jordan as a country. So it was uh, too hard to reach uh, youth even, especially that we are working with adolescents, which is uh, a, a age group uh, starting from 10 to 19. And thinking of the age group uh, starting from 10, uh, from 10 to 17, the, this uh, uh, youth group need a consent from uh, their guardians and their parents. So it was hard to reach them in the first place. Yet uh, still thinking of the uh, learning session, uh, um, uh, um, it, it concluded two uh, many uh, activities, uh, including a working groups, including uh, discussions, including even building a database, which uh, only the youth participated in this uh, part because uh, 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 they uh, uh, started a, let's say, or founded or established a small database uh, that uh, concludes all the questions uh, they need as a um, as a group, as a, a targeted group, because the, uh, we decided on by the participation of the of youth that our final uh, knowledge product will be a guide that will answer these uh, questions. And uh, one of the um, measurements we um, we think we, not we succeed, but it was a good practice for us that uh, we started with only two uh, adolescents. And uh, that was because uh, their parents were interested in them uh, participating, which, was, which wasn't which was the case for all the participants. And uh, as, uh, like the second uh, learning session, it concluded uh, around eight participants, which I see as a success because we like doubled the uh, the number of the participants. So it wasn't the, uh, the easiest, especially when dealing with a sensitive um, uh, topic. Yet uh, we are in the middle of the sharing journey now. We still have two learning sessions to come and we are working on uh, like even uh, getting more uh, adolescents to, um, to this uh, safe uh, space. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, really interesting to see how you build these trusted relationships. Noshin, would you like to share some of the formats and processes that you've been working with to generate this meaningful dialogue? Yeah, I think in terms of formats, I have, I, I, I think I can say that a mix of both online and physical works best. Because when it is only online, sometimes you don't, uh, I'm not talking about Zoom uh, meetings where we can see each other, but sometimes you're just on a platform, you have the question, you're putting your responses. Sometimes you don't, you don't, um, you don't connect. And in terms of, of, of what's going to happen later, I would say when the, the physical meeting is not there, sometimes I feel that something is missing. And very often when it is just online, I feel that in terms of action, it's just going to be, you know, in a in a document presented somewhere, but I don't know what's going to happen next in terms of action. So I think what works best is when because why we do online also is to save on on time and also on on the cost of you know bringing some people somewhere for a long period of time. So the, the most of the discussions take place online and then you know just finish up the conversation and also get to know each other because this personal touch, I, I believe, is very important when we are uh, advocating for something and we want to do something to, to improve um, the condition or, or the environment of something. This is about the format. For me, it's a mix of online and physical. Now, what, what makes something meaningful is if it is online and if it is over a period of time, having a dedicated facilitator is very important because if we don't have someone who is moderating, facilitating, it's it's not going to work. You know, either contributions will become less or it will go in all directions. So I think uh, facilitation and moderation is very important. 
Uh, third, in terms of if we're talking about platform, it should be user friendly. And if I take the example of myself, I joined, we use D groups as the mailing list that I mentioned about. And I joined the youth group, but through that, since it was on D groups, I discovered KM for Dev. At that time, there was Media for Dev, you know, other kind of groups that I joined as a young person to see what's going on in other fields and, and network, learn, and yeah, and grow. What also were, uh, is important is uh, as a young person to feel free to express myself like. Anywhere I am, I don't feel like, you know, I am too small or my experience is too small to share. This, this, this is also important. And last one, I would say, which is, I think is more important than, than all, is not to let a dialogue or a forum be a one-off activity, like it is as part of a conference or something. And then when the event is over, the dialogue is of everyone goes back to what they were doing. So I will end with this one. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Machine. Those all really important points. And I think that, yeah, that personal touch and again, this sort of sense of commitment. So commitment to have this funding. And we saw funding come up in the mentee of being able to at some point in the process bring people together face to face. Um, really important. Erica, I want to come back to you. And we heard quite a lot of the formats, but we have a question also that I think we can put to you from Jessica in the chat, which says if you're working with a specific group of young people, and they seem less interested to engage if it's not fun it's not in person it's not outside or in nature and you did talk a lot about fun Erica so we want to hear a bit more about how you you made your activities fun so Jessica wants to know how can one motivate them and get them to commit and share in online spaces so I think that's bringing together a lot of what we've heard from all of you about building relationships the personal touch the fun so Erica what what, what would you say in response to that question uh, thank you so much. Well, I think that, um, you know, the fun was important for us for the process, like why we were engaging in the regional consultations, how to keep a lot of people three hours and a half with us in the room, trying to, you know, collect some data that would have later informed the youth for action. But I think that, um, Jessica touched upon one important aspect, like also how to keep them on board in the first place. And for us, it was not just about creating a youthful fraction, which would have been another youth statement. It was important to let them, to let all the participants know, because we also have received questions about it. Like, okay, we are investing three hours and a half in this process, but then so what? After that, after, after the youthful fraction, so what, right? Uh, some even ask whether we are we were going to pay them for the efforts and for you know contributing their expertise to in our dialogue. But I think that that was key. What was key was really the fact that we had a clear plan. So after the presentation of the youth call for action at the World Forestry Congress, we already knew that we would have had created a legacy of the youth call for action so that they knew that they were not just wasting their time to create another written statement, but indeed, as a matter of fact, like the general director of FAO is strongly supporting like the youth call for action. He wrote a letter about it. He will be the next agenda item for the COCO, which is the Committee on Forestry at FAO, and he's the highest statutory body of FAO for the forest sector. Uh, UNFF also shared the Youth Call for Action on their website twice to make sure that it has the greatest visibility and recognition as possible. The UN Youth Envoy um, talk about our work at the UNFF and also in other forest-related international forum. And also I think that, so, so this is for the legacy, right? But as a step before the legacy, what was key was the fact that we had the support of FAO and the World First Congress Secretary. So to have a formal invitation, a, a formal engagement of youth that wasn't just about youth for youth, but also youth supported by, let's say, big players, in our case, in the forest sector, um, it was 
key, fundamental to just increase the motivation and the, the, the drive to participate in these dialogues, knowing that it wasn't just going to be a dialogue among ourselves, because after all, we know what are the challenges, we know what could be the solutions, we already know what we would like to see in the forest sector. It was just about having the assurance that our voices were going to be heard and commitment would have followed based on the youth call for action. That was really one key element for us. Um, also, I would say that in terms of, um, so of the process itself, in order to engage everyone, and so that also comes back to fun, it's uh, the quality of the moderation. So I think that uh, I completely agree with what Noshina said. Uh, to have somebody that helps you in, you know, engaging people, uh, it's uh, it's key because, as I was saying before, we have to be flexible. Despite having a clear structure of the regional consultations, sometimes we had, you know, not so high number of participants. Some of them were shy, and so instead of going into the breakout rooms, we remain in the plenary. And then the quality of the moderation was key. So mm -hmm. to, you know, have all the ideas from really everyone. And um, so I would say that it's a combination, combination of having trust and a platform and knowing that our voices were going to be heard and actions would have followed. And also during the process, having being supported by experts, moderation, Great. platform, and so on. Great, thanks so much, Erica. Um, Warud and Noshim, was there anything you'd like to add on this kind of keeping youth engaged and committed? I mean, obviously, Erica shared a lot there in terms of, you know, having these clear plans, incentivizing them, making sure that you're not just talking youth to youth, but that you have the support of these other decision makers and large organizations that are helping to amplify your voice. But from your experience, how did you really maintain that commitment and engagement? Anyone like either of you? Okay, worried. Thanks. Yes, I can. Um, I can. Um, thinking of uh, of our experience in this, one of the steps we had to do is to create what is called a um, a, a change package, which is a type of commitment uh, we do to uh, uh, to commit for during the 89, uh, 18 months or, uh, of this uh, journey. So uh, one of the uh, on the in this change uh, package we uh, should uh, write and specify what exactly we will do in this journey and uh, adolescents were there in each step. So even uh, in like maybe this is on the uh, level of uh, on this activity uh, specifically, but thinking of institutions and organizations, this might be included in the strategic planning uh, to uh, uh, maybe uh, to to include a a, a SDG uh, a goal that uh, work for uh, youth and to stick to it so uh, I think maybe um, a, a, the commitment for uh, for youth in each uh, level um, will be the key great thank you yeah I, I love this idea of this uh, change change package I think that sounds really fascinating um, and useful. Noshin, anything to add in terms of this commitment and engagement that you found works well? Um, I think I think both speakers have, have highlighted you know the essential part and for me really it's uh, whatever we are doing it, it really should be long-term sustainable and and like I said, not something we are doing just now. And yeah, when it, it, it concerns youth in any sectors that we are, the change that we want to see is really, it will take time and we have to keep on going. And for it to keep on going, we need to uh, regularly hear from them, have strategies, also adjust them because as we move on, there were some, you know, uh, things in the environment, in the context that change. So we have to keep on, it's, it's a work in progress, I would say. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, I think it's really good to keep hearing this, you know, long-term commitment that we're needed because I think a lot of organizations don't want to hear that. They want these kind of quick, instant engagements and really to stress the importance of the sustainability and long-term of youth initiatives. Pierre, I think we're going back to our mentee now, so I'm going to hand it back to you. Uh, 
it, yes, actually, actually, I just uh, I, I like to uh, um, uh, mix up things, I guess, uh, uh, without warning. Also for you, Jessica. So yeah, uh, <laughs> before we go, before we go back to the Menti, which I think will bring us towards the closing of this first part uh, of this part of the uh, event, um, we talked about we just talked about now different about formats, uh, uh, things that work uh, that you have experienced. Uh, I'm curious to know if there is anything, again, we don't like to use the word innovative so much, but something creative, something new, different uh, that you have experienced, that you've tried, uh, uh, maybe just, uh, I, I don't know, I'm thinking, I mean, sky's the limit here, but again, because what we said earlier, right, uh, uh, younger generation use different uh, tools, but also different language in a way, right? Uh, uh, texting and all that. So is there any new approach uh, that uh, uh, we would be interesting to look at? Noshin, yes, your hand is up. Yeah, Please. Uh, I would uh, share right now, I would say in, uh, let me share, just say in the African context, but it, it can go beyond, it might be the same in Jordan or, you know, in Europe. Uh, when youth are in a meeting, like if we are in, we just went to an event or we just got together, the first thing that is happening these days is really WhatsApp groups. I think this is becoming very, very uh, popular and most used by youth. Whenever you get uh, some youth with the same, you know, uh, something that brought them together, the first action that is happening is a WhatsApp group, whether it is for an event you went somewhere or it is on a topic on something, or it is a group of entrepreneurs want to share some tips, ideas, or others are going to sell stuff. But just, just this is becoming very uh, popular and, and used widely here because some of them, I would say, emails like mailing lists are not, uh, is not convenient for them because some don't even check their emails every day. And uh, what they have is their mobile phone. And even in terms of internet connection, most of them are through mobile data. And WhatsApp is becoming more accessible to them. But of course, having WhatsApp group with 250 people is not always easy to moderate and to control. And this is, this is some, I would say, WhatsApp is, is becoming widely used. And same for Telegram and I, I have started to see a bit of Discord being used for groups which are a bit more into uh, learning, into technology. They are using Discord quite quite a bit now. This is a bit on my side what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thanks, Nasheen. Uh, this is great. Vurud, Erika, uh, how does this uh, relate to your context and your experience or what uh, different uh, uh, new approach? Uh, can you would you like to share? I can Good. share. Um, actually, building on uh, what uh, Noshin uh, added regarding the uh, the way of uh, uh, communication and the connection between us and between the uh, local team. Um, as I said, uh, we usually work with uh, people from institutions, so always the email was the first tool to uh, connect and communicate between um, uh, us, yet uh, having um, uh, used in our group uh, made it uh, obligatory for us to change this tool to fix the uh, youth, so this was a shift in the communication tool that was uh, used, and um, it's on the other side it's it's a bit sad for us that because we are making a intergenerational um a dialogue we are uh, uh like we are limited regarding um the creativity like uh, personally, I would like to use uh, a creative and a new tools and so on, but to what extent so the other group, um, the formal group, would accept that? So uh, it happened twice that there was a suggested activities that even include uh, more uh, dynamic and physical um, uh, movement, and yet it was uh, it was there was a request for us to um, uh, to delete that because 
uh, uh, it might not fit all the uh, participants and all the um, uh, all the uh, yeah all the all participants in general. So um, in, in maybe in our uh, experience, um, because it's not focused directly on youth themselves, and we are uh, mixing the uh, categories, uh, creativity is a bit uh, limited. Uh, but regard the uh, connection between them, we uh, shifted the, the tool to fit the youth group more more than uh, the other. Thank you very much, Varud. Um, I was not finding my unmute button. Erika, would, what yeah. would you like to add on what uh, uh, we already have heard from Noshin and Varud? I mean, from my own experience, maybe, you know, that shows the fact that my colleague and I, we aren't that young anymore, but let's say that we use more traditional channels. So I'm not sure whether I can contribute to the, you know, new ways of engaging with people because we just relied on traditional social media channels. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, social media of our generation, let's say. And the, the new, the, the, the thing that was new uh, was probably Miro, but that was, you know, that worked only for specific regions and not for everyone. I don't know if you remember, but by the time we arrived to the last regional consultations, which was, um, I think, Africa, it wasn't that practical anymore because we had to adjust to ways of uh, other other ways of engaging with with with, uh, with the participants that were catered to their own situation so some of them didn't have that that much that much that much time and my board as much as we thought my colleague and I we are both from, from Europe and as much as we thought oh this is widely used everyone knows my board I mean it was it wasn't that known. And for us, the most uh, creative way was to use the trees to vote the ideas. That was the maximum of our height. So I think that the success of the regional consultations were more really on the process, what I just said before in the previous question, uh, than you know, an innovation per se. So it, it was rather you know, building trust, the goal, who supported us, than the actual uh, ways that it was structured it was quite traditional but um um yeah it was i think other other elements that contributed to the success not necessarily innovation or sorry new ways because you don't like innovation yeah no it's okay it's okay it's good we can take one in one innovation per meeting that's okay <laughs> one mention of innovation per meeting we can take uh we're running behind with our schedule i'm looking at jessica uh I think I would like to take, I mean, there is one question in the chat, which I think it's interesting. Unfortunately, Emma, who asked the question, left the room, but maybe that's a good one to round this, uh, uh, this panel. And the question, I think it's for everybody, and if you can answer in one minute each, if you go back, if you could go back to your journey, what would you change in how you promoted youth participation? So is there maybe nothing, maybe maybe nothing because uh, uh, we, have, we are hearing about successful examples, but if there is anything that you would do differently um, going back, what um, what would you do? And maybe can we start with you, Noshin? Okay, what, what would I change to promote or What would concept? you do different? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. so. I would say um, one thing which is quite still relevant when it comes to youth participation is uh, on gender balance. I think since then and until now, we are still kind of struggling to bring gender balance, like there are more men than women into discussions or even into- Not today. Not today. Yeah, not today. <laughs> which is good, which is good. But in reality, even if, you know, we are, if I talk about just in terms of online platforms, as an example, if you see um, most of them that, you know, you manage, you see that still it's, it's more male dominated and it's still like, I would say on average 70, 30 male, female. And I think this is something that if I could go back, if we can do a bit more to bring more balance in participation, this is one thing that I think I, I could have worked more. Thanks. Thanks, Nasheen. Um, Borud, 
Would you like to go next? Um, yes, sure. Actually, um, personally, I, I don't believe in um, uh, saying if we can go back. I always like look forward because it's impossible to go back. And the experience was true. enough. Yes, the experience actually was so enough for next time in your next iteration. Us to learn. What, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I, I'm thinking of um, our process trying to uh, include uh, youth and reach uh, youth in the first place. Um, um, it was uh, super hard for us, and on the opposite, it, uh, it, the the interest was uh, female sided only. So even a, a mother uh, sided only, I think it has to do with the topics uh, sometimes uh, for the, with the gender stereotypes. So I think we might think uh, more on uh, how to um, uh, reach uh, the categories through other uh, institutions that might help because at the beginning we were uh, trying to reach them individually and individually no one would send their um, uh, adolescent uh, children to a, a something that they are not uh, directly connected with, if you know what I mean. So uh, reaching institutions made it uh, more easier for us to reach this uh, category. So uh, like, as I said, that uh, starting from the learning session one, then uh, the learning session two, there was a difference of about, of about six person. Uh, so um, I think we would more get to an uh, institution instead of uh, individuals. Thanks, very good. Thanks very much. This is really good. Erika? Yes, I, I think What that, about you? Going yes, forward or looking backwards? Moving forward. Always moving yeah. forward. But let's say for uh, in another potential consultations, always about young, youth and young professionals in the forest sector. Like, again, challenges, solutions, especially the solutions and the best practices that some of them were already implementing on the ground. I think that one thing that I would do is also to foster participation and recognition and visibility. I would invite these young people to provide us with short videos of what they are doing, like really showing, you know, their environment, where they are working, uh, the projects, the results maybe of these projects, the impact, the people involved, because I think that that would have, have increased even more the impact, and, and, and especially if people would be maybe too lazy to read a document, which is in this case the youthful fraction, maybe they would be more engaged for the audience, I'm thinking, to see a video. And uh, I think that the, we're doing in the future. Thanks, Erika. So video as to add to the uh, to, to to hear directly from from the people. This is really good. Jessica, see you haven't muted. Doesn't mean yeah. we have to move on. I think it's time to move on, but before we do, obviously we want to really say a huge thank you to our three speakers for sharing so many valuable insights and experiences. I really do feel like I've learned so much and things that I can really apply and take forward and share with other organizations. So thank you very much to all three of you. Um, you will also get a chance to hear more from them in the breakouts. So we are going to put you in breakout rooms now. Um, Pierre will share his screen and we will explain briefly what we've asked you to do. So you're going to be in a breakout room with five to six people for 15 minutes. Um, you will see in the chat now a link to a Jamboard. So please click on that um, before you go into your breakout. So you have that open. And then when you're being whisked through the ether into the breakout room, just make a note of the number you're in. And then when you get there, you can find the corresponding frame on the Jamboard for your room. And so you'll see this as you, you enter the Jamboard. So yeah, we want you to go there, find your breakout room number, you may want to nominate someone in your group um, to, to help guide the conversation or to take notes, or you might just work that out together as a group, up to you. Um, and then before uh, we come back to plenary, maybe just some, one person might volunteer to give a very brief overview of the key points. But what we want you to think about is really what we've heard from our speakers, but within these three different uh, 
context. So first of all, we've heard a lot about people. We've heard a lot about values and skills and experiences and behaviors that really support so trusted relationships. How do we build intergenerational exchange and dialogue and these kind of real people interpersonal skills? So what what are those things that are needed to really engage youth and amplify their voices? So, of course, you might also have really valuable experiences to share and build on what we've heard from our speakers. So we want to capture some of that today. And then we move from people to process. So we've heard, again, a lot of really amazing ideas on methods and approaches to engage and amplify youth voices. So we'd love to hear, again, some additional ideas to that. And finally, the technology. Obviously, we've had this sort of call for a mix of virtual and in-person, but how can we really, and I think this goes very important for for connecting all these events. So the synchronous, asynchronous working that digital tools can also be really useful for, as well as the tools that you might engage in the actual events themselves. And so we'd love you to share all of those. Um, for any of you that haven't used Jamboard before, you can just click on these sticky notes that say edit me and you can delete that and put your own comments and then you can add additional sticky notes and um, with the sticky note icon, which is the fourth one down from the top on the left hand side. So I think unless there are any questions, we will open the breakout rooms now. Let me just do a little bit of moving around as some people have left. And you're going to have 15 minutes. So we wish you very fruitful and interesting conversations. Thanks, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. OK, we are a smaller group now. So we just have 10 minutes left of our time together. Um, I would like to invite Razan. So we were very fortunate to have two colleagues today from Jordan and Razan has been our active listener today and she's going to provide just you know her key takeaway from being part of this session and this dialogue um just to give us a yeah wrap up and then what we thought we would do is we would just be nice to hear from everyone so after Razan we'd, we'd like to hear a small reflection from all of you on maybe your biggest takeaway or one piece of action you'll be doing next as a result of taking part today. But Razan, over to you. And I will just pop your uh, bio in the chat for people to have a bit more information about your background also. Thank you, Jessica. It was uh, such a fruitful um, event. We have so much, we've learned so much so far. And I think like um, the key lessons um, I've Taken up from our uh, chat show and the questions that came up, uh, that engagement uh, of, for you should be creative. Uh, we should have a clear plan, uh, expect set expectations, objectives, but also be flexible. Um, the use of multiple methods, like um, to know what, if, and when, and to what extent uh, youth are engaged. Uh, also the importance of support on multiple levels, like uh, we talked about um, on like a policy level or when we talked about a technical support, uh, also the funding inclusion of youth and uh, collaboration when engaging with engaging them. Uh, building rapport, I think is an important uh, key lesson. Uh, since uh, also you have a driven goal setting, uh, so it is Im an important to uh, keep encouraging uh, them to raise their voices. Thanks so much, Razan. That was a perfect summary of everything we've heard. And so, yeah, really great job today. So let's hear from everyone. So we've got two options. You can nominate yourself and unmute or we can popcorn or I can start calling on people, but Warud, you look ready to start us off. So I'm gonna to go to you first and then perhaps you nominate the next speaker. So just a brief reflection from today. Yes, um, uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, like yeah, listening and hearing for all the different um, experiences uh, reminded me that 
still uh, the values are the same and our expectations uh, are the same at the same time. So when we need to use and when we need to uh, to work with the youth, it's regardless what the topic is, the engagement is the key and. Uh, um, um, I did, like looking at the, the other uh, models, uh, it, uh, it reminded me that uh, including everyone and leaving no one behind, regardless, uh, um, is supposed to be a mission for every one of us. So I want to thank uh, all the speakers and all the audience for being here and uh, for uh, uh, the, the positive um, energy and uh, for uh, listening and so on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mahmoud. I think we'll go around the screen. So, Norshan, you're, you're next on my screen. Your brief takeaway. Uh, I think I, I think it was a nice conversation. And in the group that we just left, uh, we've heard about TikTok. And I, I, I didn't think um, to use TikTok for dialogues, but why not? Uh, because I... I use TikTok, but I would say I'm not using it for development as such. It's more personal that I'm using it. I have started, but I saw that for development, it's getting less rich and for personal use. But I'm still testing it, but it's good to hear it and, and see that people are starting to see the potential of it in development. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I, I, I learned. And I heard also about Discord. And yeah, it, it, it was nice to hear about other experiences, learning about processes and also new tools, which I'm, I'm quite passionate about, you know, discovering testing tools. So it was a nice one. And I hope we will continue the conversation after this event. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. So we'll move to Jessica. Jessica, would you like to unmute and share a reflection from today? Yeah, um, so I've been more active in a very more of a closed bubble and it was of like environmental activism um, in the, that youth space. And um, it was really nice to hear from other sectors, especially considering that like the environmental crisis is also a social crisis and, and then everything is interlinked. So yeah, I really enjoyed the sharing. Um, my group was the same as uh, Noshin's. So yeah, we had lots of cool discussions about um, what it means to be a good facilitator or moderator and to to speak less and listen more and, and look out for your own biases. Um, and I thought that that discussion was, was really valuable uh, in my position. Yeah. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. We move to Krishan. So I don't think you, but we would like to hear your perspective on today and what you're going to take away. All right. Sorry for having joined halfway through and I really was able to interact more in the, the breakout session just now. But um, I was in Razan's group and I was quite interested to hear that she had a mixture of community of practice, which are both online and in, in, in person. Uh, and, and I'll just share that I had a a 14 months experience of working with a group, initiating activities and, and, and developing a whole vision and doing everything by meeting only through online meetings. And it just happens that I, you know, having done this before in, per, in person, to realize that you can also achieve a similar level of interaction through inter, uh, online tools, I think is interesting. And, and the question remains now, whether this will still continue as we open up again or will people fall back to their old habits but i think there's potential to capitalize on both you know the benefits of online which i said was able to reach a wider audience but you, st you still have the discussions face to face to get to an outcome but you bring it back again to the online uh, version so yeah, yeah that's my my takeaway Today. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much for sharing that. Yeah, we need to see these hybrid uh, methods coming out and emerging. Jacob, can we move to you? Would you like to share a reflection from today? I'm guessing you mean me, right? Yep. All right. Yeah, I think uh, one of the, the really good um, things I got out of this was actually uh, a point that Jessica made about um, us, well, uh, uh, people stepping out of the comfort zone of what is already an established way of communicating to better cater or make available spaces for youth. 
to um, express themselves, use the tools that we have in a less conventional way or more innovative way um, to try and 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 get heard. Um, so really, uh, you know, go from your well-known context and then let it be driven by um, the younger uh, segment. I really, uh, really like that uh, idea. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll move on to Erica. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed the conversation and hearing about the different uh, experiences. Um, I think that one takeaway would be to just be flexible and open and also think about your target. So yes, so depending on who's your target, the age, then you can think of different uh, approaches to reach out to them and engage with them and also follow up with them. And uh, one, one thing that also I think it's, uh, it's key and that, you know, I, I, you know, it was confirmed in this dialogue is the incentives. Before in the in the breakout room, Monica raised the, the issue of you know how to incentivize people to really you know participate. That's one important element, and um, and yeah, I think that that also depends on the on the on the, the people that you're engaging with. Monica, for instance, was uh, issuing raising the issue of people maybe wanted to have a financial compensation or even just food. In our case, it was about recognition, also financial uh, compensation. So uh, that's that's um, a difficult thing to address, not always manageable, uh, but one thing for sure to keep in mind when engaging in dialogues. Mm. Thank you so much, Erica. Yeah, really important point. So I'll now go to our people that don't have their videos on, but hopefully are still able to share. So Calvin, would you like to share any final reflections today briefly? Exactly. Um, I, I don't know whether it's evening there. In Zambia, it's evening, so I can safely say good evening, everyone. <laughs> okay, um, I think I so much appreciate, especially the exercise that we're just from conducting on um, the, the jam board. And uh, I think our, our group was, was dealing with um, uh, issues of skills, experiences, behaviors, that's with people, the processes and the technology and the things that were coming out, I think are some of the missing linkages among the young people for us to uh, see how we can really take up this challenge of being the future leaders. I think we should uh, move in the words of Nelson Mandela who says we should be the change that we want to see in the world. So if we want to see change in the world, it should start with us, and I think these are perfect uh, platforms where we can discuss how the youth can be engaged, how we can be proactive, okay, how we can believe in ourselves again, how we can be hopeful for the future using various technologies and the processes so that at the end of the day, we are a greater global uh, a village for one common common goal of, of bringing change for this for this entire world. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you Thank so you much. So Thanks, Kelvin. So we are on time, um, but we do want to hear from the five remaining people, but we appreciate if some people do have to drop off. Um, thank you very much for joining, but we will just stay on a few more minutes and just hear from our five remaining participants um, in the spirit of inclusion. So Chris, are you there with us? Would you like to share a final brief reflection? Yeah, I'm Chris from Kenya. I'm very happy to be part of this conversation today. It was my first time and I've really enjoyed the whole conversation. My take out, from he my take out in this meeting is that I'm happy because I've got some of the ways and techniques that I'm, I can engage the youth in my country so that they can work towards achieving their goals. Another, another thing is the future of leadership. I've got the I've got the skills of how I'll manage leadership in in future because I'm currently a student and tomorrow when I'll be done with school I'll think of how to deal with other people in in let's say in work or where I'll be employed or where I'll be working that is so I've got some of the things that I'll I'll really I'll really provide good leadership thank you
Amazing. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for sharing. Nemakozi, I hope that's a good pronunciation. Would you like to share a final reflection? Uh, yes, my name is Namuko Semariam from Uganda. Um, I, I randomly found uh, a link to this meeting on social media. And I got interested uh, and I, I decided to just and see what will happen here. I, I didn't know so what to expect, but trust me, I am not disappointed with the conversation that has been shared here. And my take home for today is the aspect of um, ensuring that there is long-term commitment uh, in Uganda, you would find that there are many uh, activities and dialogues which are organized to ensure that the youth go there and share their ideas, but they're usually spot on activities or dialogues which happen once and you never hear from them again. And next time they choose to come, you really don't have the interest to take part in such conversations because you'll wonder, what will I say? What is the impact of what I'm doing? I'll go there just with my time, discuss ideas, and before it, I do not get feedback. So that when the, the panelists discussed the aspect of long-term commitment, it is really important that when we have conversations like this, uh, we the youth are in position to follow up what has been said and see that there is feedback from what they've discussed. It is important that if I discuss something and I see it being implemented somewhere, I feel that my voice has been heard and it has caused impact. That is really important and I'm glad I was in position to join this call. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's one of my biggest takeaways as well, this, this commitment and really seeing action out of the dialogue. So we have two left. And Yetu Joshua, are you there? Would you like to share a final reflection before we go to Monica? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to have managed to join finally. Uh, apologies, I've been traveling and across places which have no network, but I've finally joined. I, I work with farmer field schools uh, as a master trainer, and uh, in farmer field schools, we have uh, integrate youth and also the age. And, uh, uh, from it, I've learned it's important to bring the two together. I've seen knowledge transfer from the elderly to the youth, but I think the take home uh, is still allowed to facilitate these processes outside uh, the farm field school activities. As my previous speaker said, the youth need to be listened to. It's, uh, it's, it's very important because most of these platforms do not provide for that. Like the experienced want to overtake and at the end, these youth don't even give their contribution. So it's really important that uh, we, give, we create platforms where we can listen to the youth. Of course, internet and WhatsApp technology now has tried to bring that up, but it's not really regulated because most of these groups and so on, People just throw in anything. Maybe it's, some of them are just for casual purposes. But that's still my take on, and that's a, a question for me to think through after this on how to bring in technology to boost up this. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And last but by no means least, Monica, would you like to share a reflection before we say goodbye to everyone? Uh, hello, everyone. My, my takeaway from the conversation is. Uh, exploring different platforms to drive engagement. I think that section uh, resonated for me because the organization I'm working with is struggling a lot with uh, getting the community to engage with the activities within the organization without having to either be given food or they need an incentive before they can show up. So I think, I think uh, driving engagement is the biggest takeaway for me from this conversation. Thanks, Monica. So yeah, thank you everyone for staying on for an extra five minutes. And um, so just we could hear all of your voices. And yes, yeah, so much rich um, insight has come out from today. So I'd like again to thank you very much to our speakers for, for contributing their time and experience and also very much to you for participating and also contributing. Pierre, I'm going to hand it back to you for the final um, wrap up as there may be some next steps you want to share. 
Yeah, I'll just keep it very, very, very brief because uh, we don't want to keep uh, uh, folks here much longer than, than what it is already. Again, just to reiterate uh, uh, the appreciation uh, for for you showing up and contributing in such a, in such meaningful way. I think for us as the Eagles Foundation and Christian uh, here is also part of the Eagles Foundation board, uh, we have some clear messages here. Uh, I think uh, uh, Namukose mentioned it, just don't show up once and then disappear. So if you want us to engage us in a dialogue, make sure that there is long-term commitment. So I think we, as the D-Groups Foundation, we need to really take this on board uh, and see where we what we do next. Uh, we had prepared a poll to test and, and see what some of the option might be. We're not running it now because uh, we don't have many people in the room at the moment and it's late, but we'll circulate it as uh, together with the follow up um, uh, in the follow up email uh, together with the recording and some links and, and other materials. But I think, yeah, I really appreciate uh, uh, all the comments that were made and especially this. Uh, uh, I, I think there is need and space to continue these conversations and to uh, bring uh, and to bring together um, like-minded people that are interested in, in sharing and learning from each other. So um, again, just to say a big, big thank you. And yeah, we will not uh, um, show up in one year time. Uh, you'll soon receive the recordings, information, follow-up emails, and then ideas to uh, continue this conversation. But also likewise, we want to hear from you so if you if there is anything uh, that you'd like to bring forward uh, and for us to discuss and consider together please do so you've got the email and uh, we are really um, open to uh, suggesting ideas to remain connected and activities that we can do together that's all thanks very much folks thanks everybody thank you everyone uh, thank, thank you so much play some music as we log off Enjoy the rest of your day. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks a lot.